Ronda Rousey's second run officially in WWE came to an end at SummerSlam 2023 with her loss to her longtime rival in MMA and recently in WWE, Shayna Baszler. It was a bit longer than her first run, but considerably less effective in terms of how fans responded to it and the impact it had on the business overall. But what went wrong? Why did this once highly famous, highly touted crossover athlete superstar in entertainment simply not have the whirlwind she had years before? Why was this run between 2022 and 2023 just underwhelming? For that, we have to break down into two parts and understand what went right the first time, what went wrong the second time. Rousey was always a big pro wrestling and WWE fan, even with her rowdy moniker being taken from the late great WWE Hall of Famer, Rowdy Roddy Piper. She was even involved in WrestleMania 31 and a segment where The Rock prompted her to get in the ring and get physical with WWE Evil Queen character Stephanie McMahon. And she made an appearance for a pre-taped segment teasing a feud between the four horsewomen of MMA and the four horsewomen of WWE, a match that unfortunately never materialized. Let's jump ahead to 2018 at the Royal Rumble. There were reports, last minute brewing rumors of something big happening in the inaugural Women's Royal Rumble match. WWE was in the breakout stages of taking their women's division at a much more legitimate level. What was more legit than bringing in one of the biggest stars in all of sports? After Asuka won the 30-woman battle royale over the top rope match to set her path for WrestleMania, Rousey made her debut and made headlines in the process, WWE confirming she had signed a deal with them after years of speculation that she would finally come into the biggest company in pro wrestling. Rousey came into WWE after a highly successful career MMA, where she became the first real female superstar of UFC. There was a ton of speculation and anticipation for what she would do now in the entertainment world of WWE. Despite her MMA career ending with two knockout defeats, she was still considered a big draw. And although her mic skills weren't exactly, you know, like The Rock or anything, people were understanding and forgiving, and she had a natural physical charisma that projected on the screen. Like with anything, people get better with time, and the WWE fans loved the idea of a real fighter coming into their really entertaining world and embracing the role. And in terms of her in-ring skills, there was no doubting whatsoever that she was legit, especially in her debut at WrestleMania 34 in New Orleans, where she teamed with then Raw GM Kurt Angle to face the power couple of Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. Rousey arguably drew the most non-WWE fans to watch that event, and she had an impressive performance. Yeah, she debuted at WrestleMania and had the most talked about performance at that year's WrestleMania she delivered beyond expectations. The debut contest saw her barraging Triple H with a series of strikes before giving Stephanie McMahon a taste of her own medicine, not something that many have been allowed to do before, and it all worked. The showcase was clear. Rousey was now a legitimate big spectacle in WWE. She wrestled like she had been in the business for years. There was no sense of her not feeling comfortable in this. The violence that she was known for in the UFC, the violence she was known for in jiu-jitsu allowed her to be a lot more comfortable in this world of WWE. And WWE did push her right into the main event scene with then Raw Women's Champion Nia Jax, and they were smart about putting the title on Rousey right away. Their Money in the Bank clash saw Rousey win by DQ after Alexa Bliss cashed in the Money in the Bank briefcase and almost immediately after winning it to regain the title. Ahead of her Raw women's title match against Bliss at SummerSlam, Rousey didn't want her pay-per-view performance to be the only time WWE fans got to see her do her thing. No, on Monday at Raw, she took on Alicia Fox and was successful, proving that there was going to be more of her than just being a featured part-time performer an option that maybe later on she embraced and certainly something that one would assume a star of her stature would have in negotiating power. It led to an instant sense of respect from the fan base. To Rousey's credit, she wrestled 
17 more times on Raw, but still retained that special status she had coming into WWE. Soon after her Raw in-ring debut, Ronda was quickly defeating Alexa Bliss and becoming the Raw Women's Champion, a title she would hold for almost eight months. After finishing her feud with Bliss at Hell in a Cell, she began a program with the returning Nikki Bella. Rousey's star power alone led to WWE creating the first ever all-women's pay-per-view evolution. And Rousey's success in the UFC and in entertainment prior to WWE was truly a part of that. If you don't believe it, she was the sole reason the event was likely even made. We would ask you how many such events they've had since, and the answer is zero. She headlined Evolution and defeated Nikki Nikki Bella around the same time, there was rumblings that WWE was planning the first ever women's main event at WrestleMania between Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. The next challenge that Rousey had post Nikki Bella was against the then rising SmackDown women's champion Becky Lynch, who was coming into her own for this potential dream clash at Survivor Series 2018. Becky Lynch with a new swagger on her shoulder and a rising tide of fan support, those same fans rejecting a shortly lived villainous heel turn, they were feeling where this was going, but a legitimate punch to the head by Nia Jax on Raw in the lead up to Survivor Series meant that the man had gotten concussed, had gotten injured, had gotten a brutal black eye and a bloody nose at the worst possible time. An iconic image of her posing with that brutalized face but still swaggering with attitude, WWE's plan for a WrestleMania 35 main event, and the career of Becky Lynch. This altered the entire road to the main event of WrestleMania. With one solid punch, things were different. Becky Lynch inserted herself into the program, and she wasn't even going to be in this Survivor Series match, picking Charlotte Flair as her replacement to take on Rousey. Wanting to save the dream match for possibly a bigger stage, WWE opted to go with the safe finish, where Charlotte Flair got herself disqualified. It allowed the two to go their separate ways and still have a bitter issue between them that could be reignited in the future, while Rousey got through a series of opponents in between December and February that included Nia Jax, Natalya, Sasha Banks, Bayley, and Ruby Riot. With Mania season approaching, a lot had changed in the women's division on SmackDown. Asuka became the SmackDown Women's Champion and defeated Becky Lynch at the Royal Rumble. Yeah, shocking considering Becky had all that momentum to retain her title. Becky proceeding to replace an injured Lana later that same night in the second ever Women's Royal Rumble. Ah, yeah, there you go. Get things back on track, WWE. Becky Lynch, with all that momentum, immediately confronted Ronda Rousey after winning winning the Royal Rumble on Monday Night Raw, and this set up their clash at WrestleMania. But WWE boss Vince McMahon insisted on adding second generation queen of the ring Charlotte Flair into the mix, a decision that still faced a lot of criticism to this day, but you can't argue that Charlotte Flair hasn't earned that spot. Even if Becky Lynch vs. Ronda Rousey was possibly the better feud for a majority of fans, WWE ramped up their efforts into making this the most important storyline they had going, especially when they officially announced the triple threat match would be the first ever women's main event of WrestleMania. WWE knew where the waves were turning, and they felt this as they made many memorable segments that now highlighted Becky Lynch, the man, as the hero in this road to Mania, Ronda Rousey turning into a resentful heel during the feud and lead up to the big showdown in the shadow of New York City. The man would be elevated in the entire process, from Becky Lynch's heated confrontation with Triple H to an iconic go-home segment that saw all three women getting arrested, kicking in the windows of police cars while brawling in handcuffs. It seemed more worthy of a main event than many were expecting, this was the women taking the spot and running with it. If you didn't believe they had earned it, you knew they earned it once they got there. Though the triple threat at WrestleMania with Rousey, Flair, and Lynch wasn't a technical masterpiece, it was the right kind of match at the right kind of time. WWE struck while the iron was hot with Becky Lynch, 
taking out a legitimate sports superstar in Ronda Rousey with a flashy pin. And Rousey seemingly fulfilled her dream, but not her full contract length after a year with the company. Her passion was evident. Although her run wasn't necessarily perfect on the first half, it was more impactful than any women before her in wrestling history. No woman has ever made this kind of impact in 12 months the way Ronda Rousey did in WWE. Especially when you consider that this was the real reason women were elevated with the Royal Rumbles, with the main event, with their own pay-per-view. Ronda was the fire behind all of that. Ronda rode off into the sunset so she could fulfill another personal dream, to have a child with her husband and fellow fighter Travis Brown. But she wasn't fully happy with how the fans had seemingly turned on her during that final feud. And on the Wild Ride with Steve-O podcast, she had this to say about the WWE fan base. So it's just like, what am I doing it for if I'm not being able to spend my time and energy on my family? Instead of spending my time and energy on a bunch of effing ungrateful fans that don't appreciate me, I love performing. I love the girls. I love being out there. But at the end of the day, I was just like, F these fans, dude. This understandably created a lot of resentment on the internet, where fans that she was talking about could sound off with a megaphone of any Twitter they could tape into. But much of that died down in her absence, and since the women's division had progressed since her departure, this is where we start the second part of our story. At the 2022 Royal Rumble, nearly three years after her last WWE appearance, Ronda Rousey made a surprise entrance into the fray at number 28, and it was clear right away that she was winning the whole thing. It wasn't a bad call when you really step away from it, except for the fact that almost the entire event was not really that strong at all. Rather than going after Becky Lynch and that highly anticipated dream match we didn't get back in 2018, WWE went with a match against Charlotte Flair instead. Charlotte was already the SmackDown Women's Champion at the time, in the midst of a rather underwhelming reign, so there wasn't too much hype to begin with. And Charlotte could still pull on a great match, and we still had Ronda Rousey with all that legitimate athletic skill, so we could turn it around. And the match happened, and it was a disappointment. Not just because Ronda Rousey lost, but the match itself didn't really advance either other character on the biggest show you could think of in a WWE calendar. Their feud continued continued and Ronda Rousey did get the better of Flair in a definitive I quit match at WrestleMania Backlash. That match was fantastic. That match was gnarly and violent, showed off the passion of the two characters, a little bit of a playback to what they did in 2018. The unfortunate part of it though, in hindsight, is that it would end up being the peak of her second run in WWE. She wouldn't get the same momentum for the next 15 months or so. There were several different things overall that affected Ronda in her second run with WWE. And maybe it was just the lack of a storyline that felt like it dripped drama off the screen and really portrayed her gritty character the right way. Some people felt they maybe highlighted too many of her weaknesses, maybe too long of a promo for someone whose promos aren't the best part of her act. Another problem was the out of control nature of the SmackDown women's division at the time. Raw had a division that featured superstars with considerably more mojo and a little bit more popularity with hardcore week to week fans like Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, and Rhea Ripley. Liv Morgan was a rising name on SmackDown on their women's division and she would be a part of Rousey's second run in WWE as she dethroned her by cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase with a flash win. Fortunately for Liv Morgan, WWE hadn't done enough to build her up as a serious threat. She had her fans, but to Rousey, opting for a controversial finish where Morgan pinned her while the referee failed to see her tapping out, she turned heel, which was the right decision. But even that didn't lead up to much of anything at all. Rousey regained the SmackDown women's title at Extreme Rules before going face to face and an underwhelming series of challengers like Emma, Shotzi Blackheart, Raquel Rodriguez, none of whom had the same type of magic on their side. 
Flair returned at the end of 2022 to beat Rousey in a surprising first night back title change and dethrone her in less than a minute, which was understandably frustrating to a lot of fans seeing how the title kept flip-flopping. Just like that, Rousey exited the main event scene of WWE for the women and aligned herself, though, in a positive way with Shayna Baszler, her longtime friend from her MMA days and someone who definitely got her into WWE, stating their intention was to win the women's tag team titles with Baszler. And it wasn't a bad idea. The WWE women's tag team division had been littered with all different types of issues, from injuries forcing title changes to the champions just quitting on the company. Rousey and Baszler being put together could possibly help that situation, going on to become the women's tag team champions with the Queen of Spades. But it would only last for a couple of months. This new tandem that felt like it could really do something for tag team wrestling with the women wasn't going to be that unified for much longer. The run as tag team champions ended abruptly and suddenly at Money in the Bank when Shayna Baszler, her longtime ally and fellow champion for whatever reason, betrayed Ronda Rousey, leading to the first MMA rules match in WWE since we saw those Lions Den matches back in Attitude Era, if you really want to get specific. Shayna Baszler became the first woman to beat Rousey by submission in WWE. That was it. That was the end of the road, for at least we can see now, with Ronda Rousey in WWE. While in theory, putting over her friend, Baszler, was a great and admirable way to go out, something that she even expressed herself on social media. This is Ronda Rousey, former Mike Tyson of MMA, coming in and shaking things up in WWE. Ronda gave it a lot of effort. That was clear. She wanted to be there. But did the fans want to see what was next? Overall, she was just a lot hotter in her 2018-19 run and seemed a little bit more passionate, maybe because things were going better at the time. That passion was there, and you can argue that maybe things outside of the ring can make you change your mind. WWE struck gold with her between that time, and it just wasn't the same the second time around. That's not a mistake. Ronda came in, gave it an effort, and gave a lot of credibility star power to the women around her. What do you think? Do you want to see more of Ronda Rousey in WWE? What are your favorite moments or least favorite moments from her in her WWE run? Let us know and get into those comments below. Check out these other videos from Sportskeeda Wrestling.